Alright, hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing Grinchland Assault, one of the event missions in Sparrow Knights. We've got the Black Cat Cow, Black Cat Raymond, a Grey Allite Shield because the Fire and Elemental's nice, two Quick Draw Modules for attack speed, a couple Mix Masters, a Peppermint Repeater, which is a Grim Repeater reskin, and a Permafroster. And I'll go more over those later. Running the Masquerade Battle Sprite with a Dark Harness because there's a lot of gremlins and slimes. Handgun Focus, which will be important later on. And Virulent Quills, because the Bouncing Quills are actually a bit of a pain, and again, I'll go more into detail once the run is started. So, Grinchland Assault is very fast-paced and very fun. There's a lot of stuff going on at any given time. It's quite difficult, enemies don't actually drop Phytopods at all, pills are very rare, as are remedies. And so, there is a lot to keep in mind. Now you'll notice that there's quite a few traps here. I'm just trying to take it fairly slowly, I mean... I'll only move forward when I'm 100% sure I can avoid damage. No sense in taking unnecessary hits when the hits do matter. Bunch of gremlins gonna spawn in this wave. Two turrets will spawn, one to the bottom right, one to the top left. The turrets do respawn fairly quickly and you don't have to kill them to end the wave. You only really kill them if you need the extra space. Right now I figure I might as well just kill this bottom right one, but then I'll leave the top left one alive. As long as I can, at least. For the second wave, a couple of Menders is going to spawn at the top there, you can see. And they will try to revive each other if you leave them both alive too long. So it's ideal to kill both at the same time, or at very least to kill one when the other's far away. So I'm going to try to lure them apart. Looks like I can get a few kills out of this one. Actually got all three of them. I thought I'd maybe only get a couple. These Menders should go down. Maybe one more. Okay, there we go. And then the third wave is the last one. There's two Grievers, two Lumbers. Those are the things I'm going to try to kill first, or at least the Grievers. There's also some mechs, but those are really easy to dodge. And Gremlin Bombers, but also very easy to dodge. Now, the Allied Shield I'm using. The reason I'm using that is because Fire Defense and Elemental Defense are both very useful here. You can see it also has just enough shield, but I managed to survive that Limber without taking any damage. Just barely breaks my shield. Didn't get any pills there. At least I got that one remedy earlier, though. The Cursed Vial is pretty much useless. In fact, I'm probably going to end up tossing it away. It'd be a different story if Curse applied to Trojans, but it doesn't, so... Whatever. And I will try to take down these turrets safely. There we go. Might permafrost to the other one if possible, but... Okay, whatever. Just makes faster and it's faster. Now the reason for the weapons that I took, the mix masters deal with grievers really, really well. If you have a griever flying at your face, you just have to hit it once. And there's a few ways to deal with a griever. The first one's just hit it with any damage at all, and it'll get interrupted. So the mix master does a really good job at shooting a bunch of shots everywhere, and the griever can almost never avoid them all. Second way to dodge a Griever is that if it moves up to you, you shield bounce it away, and then you can just walk away. Third way is that once it dashes, you can just use your own dash and it won't be able to follow after you fast enough. Other reasons for using the Mixmaster, Master, of course, there are a lot of mechs here. Now in this arena, killing certain enemies will spawn the next wave. There's two mortars that are going to be here, and they're linked. I think next wave the second mortar guy spawns. So once I kill this Mender, it'll split into two separate waves, basically. There we go. That Mortar one in the middle, I'm gonna try to leave alive if possible, because it'll spawn waves as soon as I kill it. Every other enemy combined is linked into a different wave. Of course, it makes more sense to clear the wave with the most enemies at any given time. So yes, Mixmaster deals with Constructs very well, it deals with Grievers very well. It does decent damage to Trojans, I mean, it's by no means going to kill them fast, but it's better than the shadow weapons I have, at least. Frankly, I just like the Mistmaster too. It's probably my favorite gun. The Grim Repeater, you can already see it's kind of useful. It's not the most used part of this loadout, it's... Um, a large part of it is for the boss. You actually want a needle weapon for that if you're not bringing a dark retribution. Because there are going to be times where the boss gets vulnerable. And if you can pull off a needle charge, it'll do a huge amount of its health. You only get a few seconds to deal with it, so... 
better to have something that bursts it down. The Grim Repeater is also very useful for just killing a gremlin fast if I'm getting cornered by it. Holy cow, it dropped two pills. Okay. Well, that's really lucky. So now I have three pills, one remedy. That's insanely good for this early on in the run, actually. With any luck, I won't need them, but, you know, it never hurts to be prepared. This Mender is killing this slime because I've got it poison, so I'll try to keep it in those sigils. Okay, there we go. I can probably just Grim Repeater this Mender down. And the Grim Repeater, you'll notice, does a really good job at dealing with Mender shields. Basically, three normal attacks from a Repeater will kill a Mender. The star of the show, though, is neither the Mixmaster nor the Repeater. It's actually this Permafroster. I'd say it's definitely the best weapon you could bring to Grinchland Assault. It does everything you need really well. It knocks down gremlins with every single shot if you've got damage max and are shooting at a long range. Oh my gosh, this might be close. Okay, just made it. So yeah, you knock down gremlins every single shot. You can also interrupt turrets with the long range shots. And it's a kiting gun. There's another gun that does the same thing, the Winter's Grave, but you can't move while you're doing that. And it fires a lot more slowly. So the permafroster is way more reliable, it doesn't leave you vulnerable, and it does a lot of damage. It's just everything you need in a weapon for this mission, packed into one. The freezing honestly doesn't matter. Like, yeah it can freeze, but not really gonna help too much. And it doesn't need the freeze anyways. So this pod in the middle here will keep shooting down rocket mines. First they land as rockets, and then the rockets become mines and explode a second time. The pod will never become vulnerable throughout this fight, so we just focus on the enemies. I believe these are the last two enemies for this wave. If they are, then yeah. So Grieve spawns there, a couple jellies. There are going to be Lichen colonies as soon as I kill these two jellies as well. Should be spawning over here. Oh, maybe it's the Mender that I have to kill? Oh, no, there it is. Okay. Just a bit delayed on the spawning. We do want to kill the other Mender, because it will revive the other one. Oh my gosh, please. Mender, just step into my shots or something. Be a nice guy. Okay, there we go. Now there's Griever spawners on the corners. That's actually not a huge deal. I mean, as long as we keep track of when the Grievers are going to spawn and don't do anything stupid like repeater charge, then we should be good. The Trojans are going to take a little bit of time, so I will try to clear out all of the other enemies first, and then get into a decent spot to deal with the Trojans. And we'll want to deal with them one at a time, or else we'll find ourselves a bit overwhelmed. Okay, just barely able to clear that legend in time. Or polyp, I guess they're called. The barriers are actually very useful for Trojans here too. And they do have the added bonus of hitting Grievers. If this Trojan would just go ahead and die, that'd be wonderful. As a side note, the reason that I'm using the Black Cat Cal and armor... It's definitely not for the defenses, I can play that much. Yeah, it has freeze resistance, but that really doesn't matter too, too much. I mean, if you're frozen, you're probably gonna get hit from it anyways. What does matter to me is the movement speed. I had to sacrifice my movement speed pet perk for charge time, because... There's a particular part in the boss where having charge time of very high or higher is... extremely important. So I do want to get the movement speed from some sort of source, it makes it a lot easier to dodge things. Honestly, I've really come to like movement speed UVs more as I play the game more. That's it for that arena, we're actually doing really well. Two remedies, three pills. And a couple barriers, which we will want for the Trojans later on. Now the loot system in this mission works is that you get boxes based on where you stop. You can actually choose to stop this mission early. As a result, though, you'll get less loot, and the loot will be lower stars. So, because of that, I've actually only been playing the mission through to the end. And I've ended up with a lot of 5-star materials. You only need 12 of the 5-star materials to make a particular weapon. And I believe I have 250 right now. Which is a little bit overkill. Yeah, just a little bit. 
On the other hand, you need about 200 coal, which is the 3-star material, to make a weapon. And... I've got more like 600 of that, I think? It's something like that. It might even be lower. Of course, I don't actually need that much, because I have a lot of the weapons made already, all the ones that I wanted, at the very least. And enough materials to make the rest of the weapons if I wanted. No, we do just have to take it fairly slowly. If I remember right, having a switch there means that it's more likely to have one up here, yes it is. They go in certain confirmations, so if you have a switch in one spot, it'll be in one of two other spots. If that's not just confirmation bias, but that seems to be the case in all the runs that I've done so far. And I've done quite a few runs so far, so it's very likely that it works that way. Now there's a mender in the middle there, and I'm not going to worry about it until I need to. No sense in going in and killing it if I can just kill the enemies on the outside anyways, it's not like the mender can revive them. The reason I don't want to open the middle, of course, is there's a couple of griever spawners. As long as I open that... Well, too late, I guess a stray shot hit it. It's fine though, we've killed most of the enemies out there. Now I can just deal with the grievers and then the mender. The Grievers do say despawn for a decent amount of time, but they will come back eventually. Let's just kill off this bender before it's too late. Oh my gosh, come on, there we go. There is a pill down here, I might need that later on. Let's find out. That is all poison this side, I can just kill it. Perfect. Slime spawn left and right, rocket spawn at top left, top right. And there are some ninjas around the place. Now the rockets don't aggro until you get too close to them, and I'm in a bad spot. If a griever, or not a griever, a ninja decides to do that to me. I'm not able to properly shield there, because if I shielded and got hit by the slime, I'd end up being stuck in a bit of hit stun and just take more hits as a result. Better to take the lesser of two evils and just absorb the ninja hits in exchange for killing the slimes. I mean, there was the pill down there anyways. Didn't pick it up quite yet, I'll have to do that later on. And this is the last wave of it already, I mean, there's not actually that much to this arena. It's only a couple waves. So once we've killed these ninjas, we'll just free up the Trojan and kill that. There we go. Take care of the Griefers first, of course, because there's no sense in having unnecessary hazards. Yeah, the Trojan's gonna take a while to die anyways. Notice that I don't have any piercing weapons, and that's because I don't think it's actually necessary. The Trojans are probably the least important part of each arena. So having them up does not pose a huge threat. There's no need to bring a piercing weapon just to deal with them, and the Grievers die fast enough to the Mixmaster anyways. Don't need to bring one of those. And I just realized I forgot the pill. Oops. I'm still fairly confident they'll be able to do this, but it's a mistake nonetheless. For getting a pill is basically like taking a hit. Well, unless I get enough pills, of course. We will clear up this middle part before we kill out the sides. There's no sense in doing anything crazy and fighting too many enemies at once. And let's try to kill that Mender and Bomber ASAP. There we go. Beautiful. The Lumber's just gonna melt. What can I do to that? Hopefully that Lumber doesn't get too in the way. Okay, we're good. Now next stuff's gonna spawn. I believe... Oh my gosh, that light's blinking. So yes, these mechs spawn at first. There's particular things that if I kill them, it'll spawn rocket turrets. Oh, I guess it was those ones. I'm still not 100% sure which particular enemies spawn them. I mean, it's possible that I could have started the previous wave earlier by just killing that left side. I'm not entirely sure. I'll need to test it later. For now, though, having the rockets doesn't matter too much. I can just go up and mix master them in the face and they will die. The giant slime's a bit more of a problem if it tries to go towards me, but... I'll stay out of reach for the most part. 
and ouch, that griever actually hit me. I thought I kept my shield up long enough. Guess I need to use it a pill. If it'll just poison this thing, then the mender won't be able to cause any problems. In fact, it'll just hurt it. I'll kill the mender before the Trojan. Now I can just kill up this Trojan, because there's nothing else to hit me here. One of the nice things about Trojans is that they're very exploitable. Just by staying near them, you can force them to use their shock attack. By staying a certain distance away, you can force them to use their swing. They're probably the easiest enemy in the game to manipulate. If not them, then slags, but they're up there. All these gremlins are just gonna fall. Permafrost is really nice. And we'll just do the same thing with this Trojan. It's in a bit of an awkward spot, actually. It's not really turning to let me hit it. But that's what the barriers are for, anyways. Should be good. One more, I guess. Okay, Griever, you can just stun me and walk through the wall again. There we go. Now we can clear out... Oh no, we already cleared out the left. I guess that's it. And this time, I'm not abandoning the pill. So yes, it turns out forgetting that pill earlier only cost me three hearts, which is not too bad at all. The boss, this is the tough part. There are turrets at the corner snow piles and a griefer that'll spawn. Uh, the most important thing to disable is the turrets, because they're the only thing that don't really respawn in the sense that once you've stopped their aggro, they won't re-aggro until you mess up. So they're disabled permanently in that sense. The griefer will keep spawning over and over and I'll need to kill it as soon as it does. Because while it doesn't do much damage, and it's quite easy to stop, it will interrupt me a lot, and it stops me from using repeaters, basically. I seem to have aggroed the top right rocket, I'll have to disable that. Although I think I'm about to get knocked back by the boss. So I'll just go in close, there we go. Now I'll have my dash up in one more second, so I'll just tank a rocket, and then dash out. There we go. I'm aware that the boss is vulnerable, but it's more important to set up these rockets first. Once the other one respawns, we can start to deal with it. For now, we can try to farm some health pills from these enemies. Now, enemies in the boss room actually drop more health pills than the other enemies in the run. So if we just kill them, there's actually a very high chance they'll get a health pill. It's probably something like 1 in 4 of the gremlins will drop it. Case of point. Honestly, it might even be better than 1 in 4 chance. It's just really high. So I can de-aggro this rocket. There we go. Mender AI is interesting. Um, if you hit a mender down to a particular amount of health, it'll actually start to run away. So if there's a hurt enemy in the corner, like the turrets, it'll go to them first. Let's check up on our mender. Yeah, it seems to be at the bottom left there. It's very likely it'll just stay there the entire time that it's been knocked down there. There is a chance that if enough enemies are hurt, it'll come up. But that's a risk I have to take, because I can't just not hurt the enemies, of course. Gotta go and fizz. There we go. Now I can start dealing damage to the boss, because I've dealt with all the turrets. There aren't too many enemies up. I've killed one of the gremlins. Okay, it's respawning now, but the griefer's down. Beautiful. We probably got about a quarter of the boss's health down, maybe a third. Either way, it should only be one or two more phases now that we've got everything set up. And we do have a nice health pill here, which I might have to use, actually. There have been surprisingly few health pill drops so far for the boss. I mean, I would have expected one or two more. But it's not too bad. I think we'll be able to do this, no problem.
just out of range on the permafroster there, so it won't re aggro the turret. Looks like we've got a pill there. Interesting. Did that griever just drop a pill, or was that a ninja that walked into my shot? I think it was the griever. Didn't realize the grievers could actually drop anything. That ninja is so low. He might just end up dying to a stray bullet at some point. Should knock back now. Yes, it does. This is an opportunity where the CTR very high really does matter because it allowed me to get that flash charge off there. And that should make it enough damage for me to kill it in this phase, actually. There we go. Perfect. Now, if I only had CTR medium, that actually wouldn't have been possible. So you can see why I choose to sacrifice the movement speed sprite for that CTR one. Just because I don't have the right UVs in this repeater yet. And since this is the end of the run, I managed to get it done without dying, actually, which is very nice. We get all the loot. There's a 2% chance of getting one of the Solstice Ring Trinkets on Elite Mode. Didn't get one this time, of course, but it's very rare. Can't honestly expect to get one. We get materials, we get crowns, and most importantly of all, we get yellow snowballs. Because who doesn't love throwing yellow snowballs at their friends? I'm pretty sure that's normal. Whatever the case, thank you all for watching, and have a great day.